I've built an ESP32 now buggy with a solar charger that tracks the sun. In this video, I will show you how I did it. Enjoy. Hey everyone, so in a previous video I built this ESP32 Now a remote control buggy and today I'm going to uh, put some solar charging on it for the battery. So I've got this solar module here and it's quite small. So in order to get a decent amount of current I'm going to have to track the sun. So I'm going to have to mount it on here on a camera pan tilt mechanism. Um, so let's have a look inside this and see what's inside here. Um, so this car consists of two um, H-Bridge uh, MOSFET dual motor controllers and an ESP32 uh, 38-pin dev board. Now, if we look at this wiring, it's all quite messy and there's no way I'm going to be able to deal with that, especially if I've got to attach servos to track the sun. So what I've done is I've redesigned this, um, this wiring onto a PCB and this has been provided to me um, free of charge by PCB Way, who have been uh, quite supportive of the maker community. So now this is the one I prepared earlier. So if we have a look at the two next to each other, actually, might be a good idea. See so this one, the wiring is just so messy, I can't deal with it. And with the uh, with the the circuit board, the PCB from PCB Way. Um, it's much neater. All the only wiring is really from the motors. I've got the wires from the motors and of course um, here is for the power input. Okay. So I'm gonna put all I'm gonna get all that working. So the only thing I have to do now is I can use the um, the control from the last project. I just have to change the MAC address. Just quickly, this is the controller that I'm using. So it's just a battery, an LED to let me know when it's turned on, a potentiometer to control the speed, but I'm not actually using that for this project, a joystick and an ESP32, which, uh, is, using, which is running ESP32 now and sending the position of the joystick to the, to the ESP32 now buggy. And I'll put all this, uh, I'll link all this code that's on here in the description so you can have a look at that. Okay, so the car's working now, so we'll just go backwards and forwards and we'll see how it goes. So now the ESP32 car is working, I've just got to get the solar cell with the tracker ready and attach it to it and then I'll take it outside and test it in the sun. Okay, so hey everyone. So this is the tracker that I've built and it's just a solar cell which is on a pan tilt mechanism and the tracking works from this thing here which has got these photoresistors. Um, so I built this off one of Great Scott's videos now the issue I had with this is it's got this thing sticking up here which is going to shadow the solar cell in non-optimal conditions and we don't if we shadow see these are like 10 solar cells this isn't one solar cell this module is made up of 10 solar cells and they're all wired in in series um, which means if we shadow one solar cell we're going to impact the current through all the solar cells, which is going to be detrimental for the whole module. So um, I'll just switch that on and I'll show you how it works. So if we shine a light, say that side, then we'll get it to move that way. If we shine a light, it's coming from the top, then it'll move up. If it's coming from that side, it'll move to this side like that so i've redesigned this so this is the new design here 
and I'll get that in the camera a little bit better. Right, and then we mount the solar cell on the top like that. So I've put these little, so I'll show you from the side. This is for the, uh, this is for the photo resistor. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And there's a couple of holes in there for the photo resistor to go through, uh, for the contacts. And then there's these little stands here, which are five millimeters by five millimeters, uh, to put the solar cell on, mount the solar cell. So what's going to happen, I'm going to put it on like that. And then I'm going to have a photo resistor in each of these four corners. And so it can face, these will be kind of facing off against each other, like fighting each other. So when it's exactly facing the sun, they're all going to be uh, matching, which means it's not going to move anymore. So I'm going to wire all that onto a pan tilt mechanism with, with a couple of servos and we'll see how that goes. Hey everyone, so I've got the tracker all wired up now. So basically the, the tracker that I printed out is mounted on top of this pan tilt mechanism, this camera pan tilt mechanism that I got off AliExpress quite cheaply. And each photoresistor is like acting like a voltage divider. So there's a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor um, which is up wide up to the 3.3 volt and then the the bottom of the photoresistor is wired to ground and then we've got a wire in between the the photoresistor and the 2.2 kilo ohm resistor which goes to the analog input of the ESP32 but for these two corner resist for these two corner photoresistors I've also added a 100 ohm resistor between the photo resistor and ground. And this is just so we've got a stronger response from these two diagonal ones to make sure that the response is stronger. And that gives us a little bit more stability. Otherwise, if we have a stronger response from these two, even if it's just one or two ohms, what's gonna happen is it's gonna get pulled around. This is gonna kind of get pulled around in this direction. And if there's a stronger response from the two bottom ones, it's going to get pulled in this direction. So having a stronger response on the two diagonals, these kind of pull against each other. So this makes it a little bit more stable. So I've just achieved that with this 100 ohm resistor for this one and this one. And then these ones, the photoresistors just are connected straight to ground. Um, and I've put some um, instructions up on how to do this, which is linked in the description. So uh, the next scene, I'll take this outside and demo it in the sun. All right, so this is gonna be my first test under the sun. And I've got it on the chassis now, on the, on the top layer of the chassis. So I can just stick it on top of the car when it's done. And I'm just gonna wait till I've got all the wiring and everything correct before I put the solar cell on. So I've got to switch it on. So here goes, first test. So the sun is kind of coming from that direction there. So it should turn towards that direction. Let's have a look. Okay. Um, okay, so it seems to have turned kind of in the opposite direction to the sun. Um, all right, so I'll have to see, maybe I've got some wires mixed up. So I worked out what the issue was. I wired everything backwards when I changed the position of the tracker. So let me try and plug that in and we'll try again. All right, so that's facing towards the sun now. So that's working fine. Okay, second time's the charm. Hey everyone, so before I continue, I'll just show you how I've got the power, the battery power going to the car. So I've got an 18650 battery and it, I'm using a TP4056 charger. So the battery connects to the charger and then it's being output through an MT3608 DC to DC boost converter. And I'm using two because this one's at about 6.3 volts. Uh, that's to drive the motors. And then this one is at five volts, which is used for the servos and the ESP32. Hey everyone. So I finished the car and I finished the tracker. So now I've got to put the two together 
And these are some standoffs. These are taller than the ones that came with the car, but I'm going to use these standoffs to mount the tracker on top of the car. So basically I can just place it on like that. So anyway, I'm going to wire all that up. And with all these wires, I've labelled all the bottom wires with these little labels so I can know which ones to connect them on the top. So I just have to screw this in and wire this all up and then hopefully I'll have it working in the next scene. All right, so everything's wired up and we can see the cells on the top. I'm just going to do the first test. So I'm going to turn it around and see if that cell turns around. And we can see it turns around. All right, now the other way. Okay, that's, that seems to be working quite well. So I've got the solar cell set up here like this. So it's just facing the window and I'm just gonna check the charging current with this uh, TP4056, this blank one here. And I haven't connected a battery to it because I just wanna check uh, the current that comes out um, at the charge terminal. So that's giving me 144 or 143 milliamps of current now in this sun. So now let me just check what the short circuit current of the solar cell is as well. Okay, so I've connected up this USB here to get the short circuit current. And I've got the, uh, the multimeter, um, I guess wired in series where the short circuit current is gonna go. And that'll have a tiny bit of resistance on it. So this won't exactly be the short circuit current but it's a good estimate and it's about 185 milliamps. So we've gone from 185 milliamps short circuit current to 144 milliamps charging current. So uh, the efficiency is probably not that bad. And Andreas Spies has done some testing on this for solar charging, although he used a bigger solar cell and he found some pretty good results as well. So um, all in all, this has turned out pretty well. I'll just take you through some of the wiring and some of the code now. So this here is the Fritzing diagram uh, that I, I use Fritzing to design the PCB for the ESP32 now car. And uh, this is the PCB here that matches that diagram. So all those orange and yellow wires are all uh, just like traces in this PCB, which means I don't have to connect any jumper cables. Now these are to TB6612 uh, FNG uh, dual MOSFET H-bridge motor controllers. And they actually, uh, they're actually a little bit more energy efficient than, their, than the BJT motor controllers, which are the LM298Ns. Uh, so the way I've connected these is I've kind of paired them together. So the PWMA pin of one motor controller is connected to the PWMA pin of the other motor controller and the INA1 pin of one motor controller is connected to the INA1 pin of the other motor controller. So corresponding pins on these motor controllers are connected together. And I've done that because I've got, because I'm having the left wheels always going in the same direction and the same speed and the right two wheels always going in the same direction and the same speed. And the reason I just didn't use one motor controller is because uh, these motor controllers can only handle up to about one amp current. So I thought if I'm going to draw too much current, uh, I should probably use two. And so all these pin connections, all the numbering, I've actually put here in the code. So yeah, so PWMA is pin 13, PWMB is pin 33 actually. And the standby pin, I've connected to pin 19, but I haven't actually integrated that into the board. Um, the standby pin I've connected up here actually and I've left that uh, purposely disconnected so what I do is I have to use a jumper cable to connect that to pin 19 uh, when I run the code um, and the reason I've left that disconnected is just in case I might have not wanted to connect it to a pin I might have wanted to connect it high so if I wanted to connect it high I've got the high connection here so I could just connect these two here together basically and this this one here connects to the positive line. So I've got a positive rail here and a ground rail here, five volt positive rail. 
So then I would be holding the, the standby pin high all the time. Uh, but, the re but then I decided uh, in the code, I'd connect it to pin 19 because I wanted to put the ESP32 uh, module to sleep while the battery was charging. And if this is connected to, to, the, to a positive pin instead of a, 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 one of the digital outputs of the board, then it's going to keep drawing current. If you want to make this into a PCB, all you have to do is click this arrow and export it to an extended gerber and then you'll get a whole bunch of files and you just put those into a zip drive or into a .rar drive and from there you can just upload them if you want to use PCB way you can upload them to PCB way and go here um, quick order PCB and then add gerber file and it's just as simple as that so I just want to take you through a few things in the code and I've linked this in the description so if you've got any questions about it please leave them in the comments but there's just a few things I want to show you so firstly is the time to sleep so at the moment it's set to 10 seconds but that was just for debugging um, you can put it to sleep for longer so this is you just put the ESP32 32 to sleep while it's while the battery is charging uh, to consume less power so you, you can just leave it in the sun somewhere now these here, servo top persistent and servo bottom persistent, uh, these will record the last known positions of the servo when, when the ESP32 goes to sleep. So when it wakes up, it knows which, uh, how, how the servos were positioned before it went to sleep. So it's going to wake up to track the sun and then this is where it's going to set the servos to. So that's all done in this wake up function here, wake up reason. Um, if, the, if it's waking up because of the timer, it'll set the servos to their last position. Um, and then, down here, uh, it goes to sleep if it hasn't heard any communication. So TLASTCOM is the last time for the communication from the ESP32 now, after 8 seconds. And that's just experimental as well, so you can change that time as well. Uh, so if you wanted to just wake up for four seconds and reset the position of the trackers you could just change this to four like that and and then the last thing i want to show you is that is this so this is an exponentially weighted moving average on the readings from the photoresistor which which helps to smooth it out okay so now i'm going to take the car out in bright sunlight and we'll test it out there